Maria says, Kendra, you have such a welcoming personality. I could listen to your videos all day. Oh, thank you. Thanks for letting your light shine through. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate hearing that. Um, the reason why I started doing the YouTube channel is because I had one. I, I've had it for a while. And I started doing it as an anecdotal thing and to talk to parents. Because I noticed that sometimes um, I follow a couple of different SLP accounts and things, but we usually talk to each other about speech things. And so I wanted to do something to talk to parents. So I had a couple of videos just explaining what do we do in school? It's not just say la, say la, like we do a lot more. So I had a couple of videos on there for that. And then um, I used to do this series on my Instagram account called Wordplay Wednesday because I love wordplay. And so I put that on there and then I just kind of stopped doing it for a while. But once the virtual, once the, the shutdown was happening in the telepractice, I found that since I had been doing telepractice for at least a few months already, I was answering the same questions from my colleagues in my county and my colleagues in the for the company I work for, as well as my colleague friends, my friend leagues, so to speak. I was answering the same questions over and over. And so I felt like this would be more helpful for more people. And if I make it a video, then I don't have to keep repeating it. So that's why I started the video, uh, I mean the YouTube channel or repurposed the YouTube channel. And that's what I'm talking about. Mainly using technology and setting up and doing virtual speech therapy. Um, someone earlier asked a question about materials and I don't focus a whole lot on materials because I don't focus a whole lot on materials. Honestly, I have a bunch of materials, but uh, I, I just kind of do the same things over and over and over again. And doing shortened sessions also lends itself well to repeating the same thing over and over again. Because even before you have time to get bored with doing the same activity over and over we're done. And look at you. You have practiced and made strides on your goals. Simone asks, are boom cards free? They, so it's sort of a, it's an account subscription, subscription service with different levels. Um, you can have a free account where you put money on your books, put money on your boom account and you buy points with that and you use those points to buy the decks. Then you can also pay for a yearly subscription to like different metals. It's like bronze, silver, platinum, like something like that. And those packages just really afford you more flexibility with something. I, I forgot the benefits, but to answer your question about is boom cards free? Yes and no. You can have a free account, but you still got to put money on there to buy points to buy different decks of, of activities. But there are a lot of activities that are free on there, you know, just like teachers pay teachers. People will create things, post it on Boom and, and give it away for free or on sale. Like it used to cost 200 points. Now it costs 100 points or for free. I have the paid Boom Cards account because I had the free one and I kept getting notices like your Boom Card free subscription is ending soon. It's ending soon. It's ending soon. And I look and I'm like, well, do I have to get a paid account and why? Because I don't, I'm not going to create any boom card decks anytime soon. So I don't need to pay for that, that level of account to be able to create. I couldn't figure out why I needed to pay for a free account, but my school's, but then my school's parent PTO group offered us a free Christmas gift of $50 for um, any website that you want to get materials from. So I'm like, hmm, I'm going to apply this to Boom. And boom, I got the one-year subscription, the basic one, basic, basic, one-year subscription, and I have extra points to go ahead and buy more stuff with. Because that's, that's how I spend my money um, anyway. So Juliet seconds, let's see. Oh, thank you. Juliet is seconding Tavidia's compliments of your girl. Thank y'all. I appreciate hearing that. I really do. Because, you know, I sometimes when you're doing things <clears throat> and putting it out there, you don't really know who's getting it, who's, who's you know, receptive to it, what you need. So thank you for saying that. 
Okay, I see Linda Miller's answering that question about directing you all to increase your service minutes to the what's an IEP district director is saying that. Huh, that's a tricky one. Okay, thank you, Tanya. Tanya says this was helpful information. Thank you, thank you. Aw, oh, y'all are so welcome. Thank you for saying thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you, appreciate. You welcome, sister. Any SLP bloggers you particularly like or follow? I follow a couple of SLP Instagram accounts. I don't really read blogs, and that's why I didn't. I tried starting a blog, and I didn't carry it through because I don't like reading blogs, so I don't really like writing them either. Instagram accounts, yeah. So it's not so much Instagram accounts that I follow outside of my friends who I know, but I follow the hashtags. So one of the hashtags I follow on Instagram is hashtag, because you can follow a hashtag on, on Instagram. You don't have to just follow a person's name account. I follow the hashtag SLPs go digital because any SLP who makes a post about whatever they make a post about, if they put the hashtag SLP goes digital into their post, then it gets pushed onto this feed. So then I see a variety of Instagram accounts talking about what I want to see, which is digital material activities or ideas and things like that. So follow a hashtag, something like that, um, based on what you want to see. And then from there, I do find some SLPs who they, uh, you know, if they post, if I see their post enough in that hashtag in my feed, then I'm like, oh, they're, they're, they post interesting things. I'm going to follow them. I just started following one called the Unpopular SLP. It's an anonymous account. Don't know whose it is, who's running it, but they post unpopular opinions and thought, thoughts and ideas that we have. And so they either post their own or they take other people's and stuff. <laughs> One of them is like something like I'm burned out with trying to be, with, I'm usually not this friendly and interacting directly with parents is, is burning me out having to be this friendly. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> All right. There are so many. So Mar either Marcia or Marcia says, there's so many free resources available now on Boom. Yeah, and they increased their amount of free resources once the shutdown and everyone's thrust into doing virtual therapy happened. A lot of TPT activities and interactive PDFs are great. Yep, and so um, the TPT activities, when they say that they are not no print activities, it means that you can get the activity from TPT from the, that person, download it and save it onto your uh, desktop, your flash drive or whatever. And then now you have it as a as a, a file and your stuff. And that's usually a PDF that you can, if you have Adobe, which if you're using a work computer, most likely you have Adobe, then you can use it to just make like little notations on it, highlight things, circle things and, you know, type things on there and uh, use it in sessions. So that's what makes it interactive. And there's more features too. And I talk about that in, where do I, um, in my video, Virtual Speech Therapy, Four Steps to Prep. That's video number two on my YouTube channel. I talk about doing the survey uh, talking to teachers about getting scheduling because you know they're doing academic sessions so I want to schedule around that and some basic resources and organizing things um, and then also in video number one the four basics uh, I do talk about in equipment some ways to store your your digital materials Wanda says regarding boom cards with the paid account, you can track individual student data, which helps with progress monitoring. My school purchased my account too. Oh yeah, that's right, Wanda. That is one of the benefits of the paid account is that you can you can track it. Uh, you can set that. You can assign a deck. Let's see, you know, F cards to to John here, and then have John do them, and then you can go into your results and. I forget whatever the page is, but results or scores or whatever. And you can see that John did that deck. He practiced it. 
how many he did 20 of the words he did five of the words you know you know you can see some data the one thing with boom cards i will say is that it's it's built as an interactive flash card and so you have a picture and you have a check green check yes and eh, red x for no so if you're having a student say practice on their own or with their parent and the parent you know they say okay say say fly and the student says bye the parent can go x and eh, they didn't say it right the first time or the parent can just go ding they said it right so then the re results that you get is really just the score based on how many checks were checked the first time or the second time. But either way, you're going to eventually have to do a green check to get to the next picture. So it's it can be accurate if you're working with the student on it and you know kind of taking your own notes, but also it can be inaccurate. But I still use it. Okay, Tanya, do you ever co-teach? What do you mean? Do you mean with the teachers of my students or co-teach with other SLPs that I work with? I can say the answer to either one of those. I do not co-teach with other SLPs. We just, we work in different schools in, in our county. So we, we never actually work together. We consult with each other if we have a shared kid or we have a kid that we both know. And we have weekly meet, well, we have weekly meetings now because, you know, it's like a check-in. Like, how y'all doing? Y'all got questions? And then I say, oh, I posted a video on that on my YouTube channel. Um, but yeah, we don't work together. And then with the teachers, if I've had a kindergarten, when I did pre-K, I co-taught in pre-k because i did my speech session during the teacher's scheduled circle time i was running the circle but she was right there and her assistants were right there you know putting in taking out you know soaking up whatever so we co-taught my speech session that way and then i was basically stationed in her room as my office so i was in there all day anyway so i'm sitting there doing paperwork and i'm like what that kid say I'm giving, I'm, you know, I'm doing therapy kind of all day with the kid. Okay. Um, so now, and, and I also have co-taught with a kindergarten class. If I've had a lot of kids in the, in the class where I was taking out at, you know, the whole class in groups, I was like, I'm just come in here and, and let's co-teach this thing. So if that's what you mean by co-teach, then that's my answer to that. You all are welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Do you also test virtually? Tanya asked. Great question, Tanya. This is something that I am thinking about. So as of right now, I don't have any tests to do. Um, well, I only have one test to do, I should, I'll say. And that one just got put on my list um, for, for testing needs about a, a week or two ago. But this student who I'm supposed to test mom has not responded to my uh offers to do virtual speech therapy and my offer to do virtual testing so the answer to that is yes and no i'm willing to do it i haven't gotten any specific restrictions or guidelines saying that we can't although i did see somewhere in a facebook group that you can't test virtually or if you do it's not valid because of something i don't know um, so I would like to, I would like to test this one student, but mom is just, she, she is not with it, with, with the services. So we might, and I'm not going to be able to test her because she's going to middle school next year. I'm going to try again. I'm going to try and call mom again. And I'm thinking that I need to go to the school actually and get my owls. Cause I like the owls for language. So I'm thinking that since I can't find a digital version of owls that I would do just, well, I do have I do have access to a scanned version of the pictures. So do that, screen share that, and you know, ask her the questions. Um and that and then I would maybe try to do that in two or three different virtual sessions. That's in my mind how I dream of doing a virtual eval for this particular case with the owls language eval, uh, scan all the pictures or the ones I think I'll need 
have that file screen shared student over here and then you know they're seeing the pictures and I'm asking the questions and I'm marking it I'm marking it I have heard of that Pearson company who does a lot of our tests that we use they have Q global which is digital testing materials and I hear it's supposed to be free but then I hear that it's not actually free um, and they don't they don't have the test that I like to use so I haven't really looked at um, doing theirs Thank you for taking the time to share. You're welcome, Chemistry. Thank you for taking the time to watch. Yeah, watch. I'm guessing you're responding to when I said, if you have a work laptop, you most likely have Adobe uh, Reader to use PDFs and make in an interactive way. I have a MacBook Pro as well. And I think Adobe is, I don't even know exactly where it is, but it's in there somewhere because I can still do things. If I open up a PDF file, I can still, you know, modify it and, and make, uh, write on it and make annotations to it and things like that. So I think you still, you still should be able to do that. Okay. So Tanya is asking, okay, back to the co-teaching. Do I co-teach with the teachers of my students? And I think I already answered that. Yeah, I did. I'm, she says, I'm co-teaching virtually with the SPED teachers and it's actually working out well. It's a good option. Okay. So virtually I've thought about it. Um, but I haven't, I haven't done it mainly because, uh Pretty much all of my students have signed up for virtual speech therapy and they're getting individual virtual speech therapy as written in their IEP. So I haven't had a need to co-teach so much virtually with the, with the, with the other teachers. But some of my, my teachers have told me when they're doing their Google Meets virtual classes and they told me, like I've asked, how is my student here? They either decline services or... Um, I haven't heard from mom. Are you seeing them virtually? And they say, yeah, they, they come into the Google meets or some of them saying, no, nah, I haven't heard from them either, but, um, they come into the Google meets and do this and do this. They're doing this. They're doing that. You know, I'll send you the link if you want to join in and observe. So I've, I've had that invitation extended, but I haven't had to really use it, but I, I think I will for some. <laughs> My memory is spot on with responding to these questions. I would not remember it all. It's only because I'm here in the moment. My memory is activated and alert, but it may or may not be tomorrow. See, let me just point out a few more things here. So again, the focus of my YouTube channel is mainly to talk about virtual speech therapy and using technology to organize it, to set it up to manage your session. I don't focus a whole lot on materials because I don't focus a whole lot of materials myself. So I don't want to go sitting here telling you, and I don't, it, it's more work for me to go find a whole bunch of material options and pull all that into my, my world and download it here and then try to upload it to somebody else. So I don't focus a whole lot on materials, but there are a lot of other people who do. And so I have videos on there with the basics of setting up your, your virtual office, your virtual therapy, um, preparing to do it. I have videos on using Google Forms to schedule. I made a survey and that has been very, very useful for getting information to the parents, connecting with them and having on record in writing if they wanted to, if they consent for virtual services or not. Uh, kind of in one place. So that is video number five, using Google Forms to schedule. I have a video on there. I mentioned some mock session videos. I have two. Video number three is four session models where I do a mock session um, with not a real person, but just kind of going through how I do my sessions. And then video number eight is a mock session on Zoom where I actually do one with my nephew who <laughs> uh, ended up being very, very helpful. He was a great video. His dad does videos and film production and everything, so he's used to that life. Simone says, I subscribe to your YouTube channel. Thanks for being here for us. Happy Speech and Hearing Month. Thank you, Simone. Happy Speech and Hearing Month to y'all. Um... 
Oh, I did some videos about I doing IEP meetings. But that's a big important thing for school services. We had to do IEP meetings. So videos number four and six are talking about some of the features and using the uh, the the world of Google to do those virtual IEP meetings, which I really like. I'm hoping that once the world opens back up, that we can still have the option of doing our IEP meetings virtually. Um, and then that's it. So. That's it for my virtual things that I have. I am going to post one about using the Zoom features in therapy. I got to make it and then post it. And you guys got my YouTube channel. My Instagram account is at Kendra T dot V dot SLP. Kendra T, the SLP. That's my Instagram name. That's also linked on my YouTube channel. So you see that there. And Juliet was so kind to post in the flyer for this here webinar about my book that I have written and self-published. It is a wordplay trivia book. It would have been smart for me to have one sitting right here to show you, but I'm actually kind of sold out, y'all. But I made a trivia book for um, 90s babies. What well, I mean, I was born in the 80s, but I came into my own, my childhood, my memories, everything is associated with the 90s. 90s people like me and I have two books one is based on a different world and one is based on Martin both very pivotal influential sitcoms from the 90s and I love trivia and I love 90s so I made two trivia books for the for what I would like to see um the Martin one is sold out the a different world when it's sold out and I'm working on reloading it because that was my very first book it was a learning experience so I'm reloading it to make it better but those are on my website which is www.blacktriviabooks.com you can go sign up for the newsletter because um, that's where I'll be sending out notifications when the books are back in stock and when these when the a different world one is ready okay so I just wanted to plug that real quickly since you know Julia put it on a flyer anyway. Thank you so much. And again, thank you everybody. Thank y'all for showing up because I would have felt a little bit foolish if I had been here and nobody else was. It was just like two people, even though they would have still been just as important as the 32 people who were here. But thank y'all everybody for signing on, for as asking and answering questions. I really thank you. Thank you, Tavidia. She put my website up there. Um, thank you all for joining in. Thank you for your questions. Thank you again for the invitation, Juliet, to do this. Um, I had fun. Uh, the narcissist in me loves to have a captive audience. <laughs> Even though you have choices, you can always just leave. But, you know, I don't mind a captive audience. And uh, just really the opportunity to help other people because I did have to do a lot of, of exploring and figuring and researching on my own. And so I, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad that some of my work can help other people and we're all learning together like that. I'm still learning and figuring out some things. So if you have any suggestions, I've taken some of the ones from here, or if you have questions or suggestions, um, go ahead and comment on my YouTube video channels. That is great. So thank y'all. Thank you for putting the website there for my book. I appreciate it. Sagin. Cool name. Says, thank you so much. SLP grad student speechy. This helped tremendously. Oh, great. Oh, man. I know when you are, um, <laughs> I know when you are in grad school, it is, you're learning so much out of the book and you're practicing it, but it's not really the real world context. You still are learning once you get out of grad school. And so, hats people students have so many more resources now you know when i was coming up when i graduated from grad school we all do things differently and there's really no as i say in my wordplay wednesday videos neither way is wrong or right it's just a difference and we all do things differently so i'm gonna close out with this because juliet says that y'all gonna leave when i leave okay that's pressure <laughs> but i'll close out with this it can be very overwhelming to do these virtual services and to change how you have been delivering services. If you've been working in as an SLP for five years, 10 years, 15, 20 years, if you're fresh out of grad school, it can be a challenge and overwhelming to change how you work, right? Especially when you're forced to, you don't have a choice. 
But if you just remember that you have the tools to do this job, you're just changing the medium. It's just like going from, you know, writing good old fashioned letters with pen and paper to typing those good old fashioned letters. You just change the medium of how you're doing something. And in this case, in this pandemic a, a, a experience or situation, everybody is having is having to do something new and learn something new so that whole statement of we're in this together is literally true we are in this together um we're all learning how to do this together and so you know what to do you know how to do it just take what you have keep it kiss keep it simple sister okay take what you already have use it the best way you can the parents don't know if you're messing it up. The kids don't know if you're messing it up. You are probably not even really messing it up. But if you're hard on yourself, you think you you think you will think you are. But, you know, just do the best you can and, you know, you might find that you like delivering services this way and want to continue it after the world gets back to somewhat normal. So, yeah, and use your resources. Those are my my final words of encouragement. In the words of Beyonce, a little sweat never hurt nobody. So you keep working hard and sweating, then that's okay. I just like to use Beyonce quotes and everything. I usually could think of a better one than that one. All right, Juliet says, love it. We had the tools. We're just changing the medium. Yep. Okay, you quoted me. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, y'all. I'm I'm going to I'm going to end this now, okay? My fingers reaching for the button. I'm tapping the screen. Here is the finish button. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Good night.